Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another adventure. Today we are riding the brand new Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. Now this is based on the platform I rode before, you know, the new GSX 8 s naked machine this is the adventure bike version of that platform so using that brand new 776 cc i think it is parallel twin motor you know with, with the old uh, cross plane crank brand new chassis you know subframe this is the adventure bike version of that platform 21 inch front wheel 220 millimeters of travel front and rear so more actually off-road focus than the 1050 the 1050 d has got something like 170 millimeters of travel this is more off-road focused than the 1050 version i'm just going to be riding this bike out and about just see what i find i'm going to explore little lanes if i come across a dirt track no problem i've got the bike for it so this is really basically what in my view what these machines are for exploration you don't know where you're going you're going to be going down tiny little gravel lanes you're going to be going tiny little back roads and this is the machine for it so grab yourself a cup of something cool and i'll see you after the intro chopsy roll it So today I'm going to be just riding round. I'm going to be exploring back roads, exploring. I want to find some little lanes, little gravel lanes to take this down because, as I said at the beginning, I think Suzuki have really targeted this bike as the off-road version of the V-Strom. The 1050 is brilliant, and what impressed me with the 1050 was how good it was with the 21-inch front wheel. You know, as a road bike but it, oh, it's got limited suspension travel. This 800DE has 220 millimeters of travel front and rear, and it's got a 220 millimeters of ground clearance as well. And it comes with a little bash plate, standard. So I think this really is the one Suzuki is suggesting. If you do want to do a bit of off-road, this is it. I mean, any of these adventure bikes can handle what I'm going to be doing today on this machine. I'm doing nothing nothing uh, out of the ordinary or difficult but it's just gravelly stuff so this engine is all new for 2023 brand new parallel twin 270 degree crank it's got the two balancing shafts which is sort of a suzuki patented to re reduce vibration and it's pretty darn smooth this engine i have to say it is pretty darn smooth. I'm a little bit careful because I've got this bloody camera sticking out. It's a smooth old lump. You know, the airbox is behind the engine, but the power delivery on this is, is torque. And I don't know if the mapping is identical to the 8S, but I have to say this actually feels gruntier and it's got more pull than the 8.8. 8S, despite being a, a heavier motorcycle, it seems to pull better from what I remember. And the ride from the suspension is quite a wafty ride. You know, it's quite soft. Well, how it's been set up, it feels actually quite soft and a little bit wallowy. I think that's because it's been set up with some sort of off-road intent. You can't really feel much from the tarmac. You know, you're sort of wafted along, but in a very comfortable way. You hit any potholes, it just glides over them. The ergos on it are very nice, really comfortable, a really thick seat. There's different seat options, you know, a short seat, a taller seat. This is the standard seat. It's pretty wide. I'd say it's wider than the Multistrada seat and more comfortable than the Multistrada seat. My, my ass is sort of on the edges of it, but I'm, I'm saying it nicely. It's very padded. I've done reasonable distance on this and I've not come away with a sore bottom. So I think the seat's nice. The, the foot pegs are sort of forward. You're very upright. You know, you're like you're sat in an armchair, really, like sat at the kitchen table sort of position. You know, sort of very conventional sort of adventure bike position. But it's nice and wide still between your legs and you can tell Suzuki have really considered the ergos for going off-road when you stood up. It's got, even though I'm six foot two, I've got a really nice feeling when I'm stood up on this bike. The bars are at a good height for me and it's thin to grip. So um, yeah, that they've definitely taken off-road agility and performance into the design brief with this bike. And we will find a gravel lane in a minute 
and do a bit of stand up riding but that, that's really comfortable to stand up on oh yeah where are we here we're on my old favourite we're on the hill climb road now we've met up and got back on the hill climb road let's we'll see if we can come off this road to somewhere I've not been before this is my old favourite Huckshot Farm let's have a little look let's have a look this is what this ride's about let's just have a little look down here see what is going on bit of gravel look absolutely perfect for this this has got the Dunlop Trail Masters on it I think they're called so you know it's uh, they're not knobbly they're definitely road focused you know there's no knobbles they're just they're just heavily treaded let's say heavily treaded tires so probably perfect for this type of thing a bit of hard packed mud where are we going here am I allowed down here is this is this public oh should we go a little bit further down there let's just carry on a little bit further down here we're not doing any harm are we I'm not going to be tearing things up here I just want to have a little bit of a feel for how this bike is this is getting a bit tight I think we're coming to the middle here it's like bikes have been down here before we're now rutting we're now rutting on the V-Strom I was riding the uh, 1200 Tiger Rally the other day and that is a big big motorcycle you know this even though this is physically it's not as big it's a lot lighter as well it feels much nicer to take this off-road I feel much more confident taking this off-road than what I did with the huge Tiger and this is this is why these middle way adventure bikes are, are so good you know if you do want to go off-road who wants a 260 kilo motorcycle to do sort of even gravel lanes is, is a lot for that and this is perfect for this look at this this is beautiful isn't it this is absolutely gorgeous careful we don't want to end up in a ditch I shouldn't be here public bride away this is a public bride I don't think I should be here you know okay let's spin it round this is what I wanted to see a bit of fun just get me out somewhere exploring this is brilliant it's way up the rut it doesn't matter she climbs up that little rut all right Ooh, oh, that was fun <laughs> that was brilliant let's, let's get the, the vegetation off of the camera you've got a fuel gauge you've got a range to empty you know you've got all of the everything you need on that dash outside air temperature she says it's 23 degrees I think it's actually a little bit hotter than that you're allowed up here it didn't say I couldn't come up here did it I was gonna have a little look we'll have a little look we're gonna be long we'll spin it around in a minute it feels really planted off-road I think it's I think it actually feels like one of the best sort of off-road middleweight adventure bikes I've ridden I don't know it's, it's just got some uh, it's got a really nice easy feel to it doesn't feel heavy 230 kilos it, but it does not feel heavy at all it feels I think the wide bars really help as well so you've got loads of leverage but even sat down here on this sort of sort of this is getting quite rough and rooty I'm sat on the seat the suspension still dealing with it easily oh, look at the drop down there there's the hill climb road that's the hill climb road from up the top here <laughs> I've never seen it from that view before look at that yeah, you wouldn't want to make a mistake and end up down there would you let's have a little bit of a stand up again oh, it's just so comfortable to stand up on I think the Trans Alp's got to take some doing to be as nice off-road as this the Trans Alp doesn't have quite as much suspension travel as this either I'm wondering whether the Trans Alp is a little bit more road focused and the DE is a little bit more off-roady focused this is very nice off-road Look at the views from up here, it's incredible. Oh, we want to try and get off the busy road. Let's get us on a little back lane, somewhere I haven't been before. Let's get off the beaten track. This bike does handle very, very well when you push on. It's quite surprising, the handling of this machine. Despite you know, the soft suspension, I've really been pushing this. But I just don't, I just not got that urge to. 
I've just not got that urge to push this by. I'm just enjoying it to cruise around on, you know? This is new to me, this. I, I, at the moment, I'm terrible. I seem to be just riding motorcycles at 100 miles an hour everywhere. It's lovely to get on a bike, which is just wanting me to want to go slowly and just pull in the scenery. What's up here? North Marden. Never been up this way before. Let's go and check it out. So I will be doing that full comparison with the Trans Alp shortly, me and Greg, and we'll do a few little gravel lanes as part of that comparison because I think the DE is definitely, you know, a focused, well, it's not focused, but there's definitely more focus on it being good off-road, you know. I think at the launch on this, there was actually quite a lot of off-road as part of the launch in Sardinia, which is probably why they didn't invite me, because they know I'm not very good at off-road stuff. I'm actually going to uh, Spain week after next with Womble, with Triumph, to do the uh, Triumph Adventure Experience in Spain. So me and Womble are going to be going off-road in Spain on the Tigers, sort of learning how to ride adventure bikes off-road. Womble's always hilarious. Any off-road and Womble is hilarious. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's going to be coming soon. Me and Womble in Spain. Two days near Malaga. Triumph Adventure Experience. Sampling and having some tuition on how to get better and ride these big bikes off-road. So, really looking forward to that. So, if you want to see that, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, we're getting a bit gnarly now. Getting a bit gnarly. On the power. Whoa, there's so much grunt there. I mean, don't be put off thinking that, you know, this new engine, oh, it's not as powerful as the Transalp. You know, oh, I need more power. You'll be, it's grunt is what you want. And this is actually more grunty than the Transalp. I'm not slugging the Transalp, of course. I've not even ridden it yet, so I don't know what it's going to be like. What's this fellow on here, look? You need an adventure bike, mate. You better go a bit faster then on these gnarly little roads. You need to get yourself a DE. Come on, mate, I'm going to have to come past you if you don't mind. You know, I've got a DE here, I'm, I'm geared up for a bit more uh, loose stuff than you. I'm having an adventure here. Found another little uh, gravel lane. Well, let's just call it an unpaved road, this one. Compton, that way. Oh, I wish there was more of this in the UK. If there was more of this like this, I would have I'll get one of these, because this is what this bike is made for. This is the perfect terrain, isn't it, for this machine? Look at this. Right out in the middle of the creek. You just don't get to see these places unless you can get there. You know, on something like this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not making out this is a difficult... This is just a little gravel lane. Now, you could come down here in your car. Anywhere you could go in a car, you can't really consider off-road, I don't think. But, you know, you wouldn't want to go down here on your sports bike. You wouldn't want to go down here on your S1000R. You know, but on this, this is absolutely ideal. What a brilliant way to see the South Downs. Look at that over there. And your path has got more grass on it than it has <laughs> actual path. Then you know you're coming off the beaten track a little bit. The thing I like about this is that I'm 6'2". You know, I can flat foot this easily. You know, even on this gravel, I can push the bike backwards on it. <coughs> he says, as he slips, I and mean, I've not got off-road boots on. I've not got off-road boots on, so I'm struggling for grip a little bit. I've actually got sports bike boots on. Because I wanted something with a little bit of uh, protection in case I fall off, but I didn't want to go full-on enduro boots. I actually need uh, like an, an adventure boot. I need an adventure boot. Watch my camera, I'm going to be losing this in a minute. Actually, this is, I'm going to have to fold my camera up a little bit. <laughs> it's absolutely taking a hammering. I'm not sure I should be here, <laughs> if I'm honest. I don't think I should probably be here. I'm going to try and cross the streams. Whee! It's really easy. It's really easy to control stood up. I'm really impressed with how easy it is to ride. I'm, as I say, I'm absolutely terrible at off-road, so... And this feels easy to me. Normally I'd be crapping myself, even doing this. But this feels easy on this bike. 
at a farmer's field now. I'm going to spin it round. This is not right. This is not right at all. If you put a set of sort of semi nobblies on this, like the scorpions, it'd be even better. But I have to say, I've been quite, quite impressed with these Dunlops so far. Let's go back. I think we took a wrong turn somewhere. We've gone the wrong way. Don't confiscate my motorcycle, local authority. So there we go. If you've enjoyed the video, <laughs> Don't forget to leave me a like. As I say, I will be taking the Trans Alp out for similar treatment. Um, and then we're going to be doing a full comparison with this and the Trans Alp. So if you're interested in these middleweight adventure bikes, then don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you on the next video, if I ever manage to find my way home. <laughs> see you later, guys. And in this episode, we're going to be comparing the two new middleweight adventure bikes on the block. The new kids on the block. But Rebel, got it. The DE is actually very nice to stand up on. <laughs> you can't put this on the channel, nothing think we're actually <laughs> terrible. This is what you do, right. though. This that is right. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the Honda, really, you know, it's pretty bumpy, this. It probably doesn't pick it up on camera. And it actually is doing a nice job of it. I'm not doing a nice job of it. The bike's absolutely loving it. <laughs> I hate these little ruts, I hate them. Oh, the, ru the ruts are the, the thing, aren't they? The I ruts hate are the them. thing. Well, I actually think the Suzuki's a little easier. Christ, it's narrow for you. <laughs> I'm pleased I've got this big screen now, it's keeping all the bugs out of the place. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> I haven't got any handguards on this, so I've got to be careful, don't get the oh, front brake pulled. Take the hand varnish off. <laughs> this is what it's all about, these little adventure bikes. It's your traction control malfunctioning there, Greg. <laughs> Gives it sort of a bit of a. Wow, the wheel comes out quite full. Oh, let's try second, that's quite mad. You need to do that to go over the logs and stuff. There's a massive log that had no choice, it's all just part of off-road riding. There's a massive log in your pants now after that off-road <laughs> <Yeah>. is. <laughs> it's stuttering away, trying to save me from myself. Gravel mode again. Let's just hit the motorway briefly, just to test things like uh, wind protection. We've done it all in this test, haven't we? Doing the whole shebang. I'm not at 45 yet. So, in three, two, one, go! Look at the power of the Zuki! The grunts!